All right. Well, we know that one problem is in one of these modules. We don't know which module, but we know that the plus 18 is being loaded down. And um, on the rest of the chassis, when I remove this connector to this board, the minus 18 frees up. So there's something on here that's loading the minus 18 and one of the modules is loading the plus 18. How, how handy that we have two different problems. <laughs> That'll make it interesting. Um, anyhow, uh, yeah, uh, I need to poke around on this thing and try to figure out what's going on and also try to determine whether this is factory or not. And, uh, I'm also curious what the functionality of this front board is. I've got these two switches here. This is a really interesting switch. I've never seen one before. It's got a black slider and a white slider, and they uh, they slide next to each other so you can have 0010111. Um, and so I don't don't know what that does. And it's got some bodge, wired, bodge wires on the other side of it. So it's an interesting thing. Obviously factory, but uh, interesting that there's bodge wires on it too. Um, and then all of these potentiometers here to do all sorts of something or other. And then, then there's three, three, four, four more down there. And then there's potentiometers actually underneath these switches as well. There's four of them down there. So yeah, time for me to start studying the schematic of this thing and try to get a lay of the land and try to figure out what's going on here. I do, I do see uh, some uh, electrolytic down there, down there. And uh, like I said, there's a, a tannel on this board, so I'll try to figure out where <clears throat> where the minus 18 goes on this thing. All right, this is a schematic of the board I was looking at. They had the connector. This is the connector. So uh, uh, plus 18 and minus 18 come in on pins one and two, and they go into 10 microfarad capacitors. So maybe one of those capacitors is shorted out. So uh, here is what I've got so far. Whoa. So this is what I've got. Uh, switches came out and here's the, here's the board in question. Uh, here are the two capacitors uh, right here. And this capacitor seems to be dead and shorted. They look to be uh, tantalum capacitors. Uh, so, got to get rid of them. Oh, I can put this back. Oh, and uh, value is not important. They're just bypass capacitors. What's important is that you have axial capacitors. So I've got a couple uh, 20 microfarad capacitors here that'll fit that spot just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and replace those two, and uh, give it a give it a try. See if the minus 18 comes back to life. All right, uh, let's turn the power on. We get minus 18 volts, good. And we should get plus 18 over here. Yes, we do. So we are fixed. All right, so the 18 volts should work just fine now. I can button this all back up again. And then we can work on which module was the culprit there. Maybe another, uh, another tantalum. All right, um, so what I'm doing is I'm going through every single module. Uh, I'm gonna open it up. And I'm also going to test it. So here on the bench, I can supply plus and minus 18 volts and see if one particular module is crowbarring the uh, power supply or not. Um, and so um, you can see uh, this one here that I'm working on, and we'll, we'll talk about that. But uh, let me show you a couple that I've, that I've opened up. Uh, they've all tested OK. And so each, uh, each module... Uh, I've took a picture of the front and the back and um, tested them out. So all of those, uh, those three, three that I show right here have all been uh, blessed off. And uh, I got to this one. This one is the M10W, <laughs> whatever that is. It's, it's some kind of amplifier here. Uh, so this one has... Uh, three sections of amplifiers on this little PC board, and then there's some RF type goodness here. There's three SMAs on the back, or no, not SMAs, they're SMCs or whatever. Um, anyway, uh, this one failed the voltage test, okay? And um, so in the, uh, let's see here. 
I don't need to share the schematic. There's um, on the input here where the volts come in, there's a, there's a blue tantalum. And on the bottom, there's a blue tantalum. And then there were also on this, on this board right here, um, was one of those plastic tantalums that the other board had a bad one, okay? It had the same thing in here, and this tantalum is bad. It's shorted out. Um, and so it was pulling, pulling, down the, um, pulling down the rail. So um, I believe that this blue uh, tantalum, the dip tantalum, had been a fix somewhere in its, in, in its, uh, its history. Um, there is some strange markings on the board that look like uh, the old capacitor had failed and, and this one was kind of haphazardly put on. Also on the back side is another blue, a blue dipped tantalum. And I believe those are sometime, like I said, sometime in the past, those had been swapped out. Well, uh, the, the one here, I've swapped out it with a yellow dip tantalum. I have a whole bunch of 10 microfarad tan dip tantalum, so went ahead and used one here. So I've repaired it the way that uh, somebody else repaired it. I don't know if it was Tucker or um, somebody else, but um, yeah. So the way that I test it is I hook up the, the leads and then uh, I have to move some stuff so my camera will focus. Focus over there. All right, and then when I turn the uh, supply on, uh, I get 18 volts and 18 volts, and it's drawing about seven, 75 milliamps of current. Um, so anyway, so it passes now. So it's been repaired. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go through all of, even though this might be the one and all the rest are okay now, I think I still wanna open them all up, just as curiosity also to see the construction technique and stuff, all, all hand wired and stuff. Um, I mean, not a lot of hand wiring, little, little bitty circuit boards and stuff, but still some, some hand wiring. But uh, yeah, it's really interesting. Um, this one was especially detailed in RF shielding. The inputs are all this little box here constructed that has feed through capacitors on that. So, yeah, it's it just a lot of a lot of work was done on this one to wow, make sure it was this clean. One. This is a M9W, whatever that is. Um, but look at look at the look at the craftsmanship of this thing. Uh, there's a solder box here, a solder box here. There's some feed throughs on the sides. Um, there is uh, some uh, eight pin cans. Uh, this little section in here is fascinating. There's a feed through capacitors and then there's some uh, TO92s that are soldered down to holes in this piece of metal. Um, yeah, wow. There's a whole bunch of uh, fancy stuff going on in this one. Oh my goodness. A little transformer there. Uh, yeah, wow. <laughs> wow. And then on the back, there's a whole bunch of adjustments. Oh man, this is the good old days. Yes, sir, the good old days. Uh, here's the schematic. M9W is a wide sweep oscillator. Analog tuning, tuning speed up slow and fast. Uh, Leveled output. Uh, output. Wow. There's a ring modulator here, it looks like. Whew. Interesting stuff. All right. What we're interested, though, is pins three and four is where, where the Gozinza is for the uh, power supply. So let's find pins, pins three and four and hook them up. All right, uh, pins three and four seem to be the inputs on this thing. So uh, let's go over here to the power supply. Let's turn them on. And 
it's not working. Sometimes the Rigel gets confused, the software in it. And just for whatever reason, it gets confused. Or maybe I put it, hit a, another button accidentally or whatever, but here we go. Uh, so we're passed. This test passed. We're uh, drawing 75 milliamps and 100 milliamps. Uh, so this module is A-OK, -okay, thank goodness, because it looks like a bear to work on.